Hey kittens. Um, so I'm going to put out a trigger warning. I don't know how intense today's little thing is going to get, but, uh, I wanted to talk about something, um, that's affected me and just kind of on the topic of since I've mostly been rambling for most of these videos, uh, something that's really been affecting me lately but like always, um, it's always in the background, that kind of thing. Um, so I am a survivor of rape, sexual assault, harassment, multiple different occasions, multiple different things. Refer to it how you will. But, um, so that puts me in a really weird position sometimes, um, especially when it coincides with my bipolar. So my mental health and my trauma brain and all that, uh, are always on the balancing block for me, um, which can be really, really intense at times, um. I'm sure a lot of you saw on Saturday, I had a night out with a bunch of friends. It was exciting. Um, got to see a bunch of people I haven't seen in a while. Got to make some new friends. Um, but something we came across that I'm sure no one has ever not experienced unless maybe you've not been to a bar or only been to like extremely gay bars, but even then, sometimes it's pretty damn common. There was a creep. So a specific guy with, honestly, at the time, there wasn't many other people there at all, especially many non-female people who weren't part of our group. Um, and just very predatory. Um, making comments towards people, trying like different pickup lines, that kind of stuff. Um, if you see someone at a bar and you think you're really going to hit it off and they seem like someone special to you, I don't know if I'm going to say don't do it, but this dude was literally there looking for any chance he had. He was watching people. He was doing weird dancing alone on the dance floor before anyone got there type thing. Um, talking about how he saved gay cat, gay homeless cat from a tree. Um, like most of it you would find harmless, but creepy, harmless, but creepy. Um, but the moment I found out that he had actually made physical contact with one of the girls in my group, um, we were really concerned at that point. Um, so between us and there was another group of women there who were there for a birthday party, we talked to the waitress, talked to the bouncers, um, we kind of talked to all the different women there and made sure that we weren't, you know, going after someone who hadn't done something or anything like that. And I don't like putting people in positions that I wouldn't want to be. Um, and I am very defensive. I am very mama bear. Um, so when it came down to confronting the gentleman and all that, um, I was the person who did it. I had some awesome backup, uh, some lovely ladies right by my side. Um, bouncer was there, waitresses were there, everyone was fantastic. Um, bouncer was right on point, uh, to separate him out when he wouldn't go willingly. Um, but stuff like that, even though I feel like I'm doing the right thing, um, like, none of the establishment people had any 
worry about getting him out of there. Uh, everyone was way more comfortable once he was gone. Um, <sighs> there are various different ways to deal with um, assault or attacks or whatever, and one they don't usually talk about is um, fawn. So there's flight, fright, freeze, or fawn. So running out of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. So running out of that situation, aggressively taking on that situation, freezing, and just kind of being stuck there. Um, or what a lot of people don't ever talk about is taking your attacker or your abuser, whoever it is, and fawning over them because it is that easy way to find safety and to guarantee your own safety. So the moment that this dude started pulling out his phone and was like, this is my wife, these are my kids, how would I, why would I do that if I have a wife and kids? Which, dude, <laughs> gross. Good for them. Good Good luck to that marriage. Those kids, hopefully you never find out what kind of person your dad is. But, like, there's something deep in there because I'm a very freeze or fawn person. So, although I'm trying to get to not necessarily a fight, but someone who's going to be confrontational and deal with something if I don't know if it's going to be dealt with otherwise, and or I don't want people I know to have to be the person to confront someone, um, I want to be the one able to handle a situation. And the shitty part about all that, like, I should feel good, like, my partner was so proud of me after, he was like, I'm so proud of you, you're so amazing, I'm so glad you were able to do that, like, he was watching, but he wasn't taking over, you know, he didn't want to be like, the dude, come muscle in to whatever, right, um, and people had a better night, that gentleman was escorted out civilly, like, nothing went down, there was no fights, there was no nothing, which, honestly, he's lucky I have some rowdy friends who I'm sure if he had touched the wrong back, holy shit, he could have been in danger. <laughs> but I still feel like shit. It is Monday. And I feel like crap. There is such a difference between knowing you did something correct and or what is right and the self-doubt and <sighs> just falling back from a place of a survivor or thriver back into a victim state. Um, I'm not going to say that I shouldn't have done what I did or that I regret doing what I did, but the physical and mental toll it's taken on me I just, I feel so weak. Um, even with so many people behind me, it was impossible to be in that situation and not feel small and helpless and in genuine danger. Um, 
even with the facts being what they were. I am so lucky to have so many amazing people in my life, and I would do genuinely anything for them. <laughs> they are so fantastic. And each one of them, my heart goes out, and I'm, I was so happy to be with all of them, but I felt extra guilty because the next day I'm getting messages of people who realized I wasn't having a great night the rest of the night. So then there's a weird guilt about not being happy enough or peppy enough or having enough fun. And you feel worse on top of how you already felt bad. Which you didn't think was possible. <laughs> and there's so many things that I do. Um, I'm not sitting here just wallowing. I'm just going to school. I film my video. Um, I have like some cute little notes from people who love me that I look at when I'm having a hard time. And like, I just. I know that the things these people put down are what they genuinely mean and important and that I am important to some people. And I just, I guess the point of filming this is There's no, this is going to sound real upsetting to anyone who's looking to recover or whatever, and I'm not meaning this to be defeatist. But there's no end to a recovery journey like this. There isn't. Um, it just doesn't happen. Um, I am very far down the way. I have been getting counseling and seeking help and such for a very long time now, um, for different results and whatever, so we want to call them. Um, but this shit sticks with you forever. And... As strong as someone can be, it is taking a toll on them when you can't see. And that doesn't mean that if you have someone in your life who's like that, it's there for you to rush and be like coddling them like they can't take care of themselves. But just... understand, I guess. Um, so yeah, on Saturday, I talked to an asshole. I got him out of a bar, um, where there was a lot of people who were uncomfortable with his presence there. Um, he wasn't a small guy. He wasn't a young guy. I should feel proud of myself, I think. Um, What I am feeling weak, powerless, distracted, guilty for not having more fun, um, and for not being a better, I guess, hostess. Like we were at a bar, but I had invited everyone there. Um, I don't feel like enough. Um, I think there's literally a little piece of paper here that says you are enough. <laughs> um, 
but Um, I am very lucky to have been there with so many amazing people because the people I love make me stronger. Um, if you are someone who was there and were concerned about me not having a good time or anything like that, it's just me doing what I gotta do. Um, I don't think there's going to be a day where I look back at, at that day and I don't feel glad um, with what I did, but I don't know if there's going to be a day in the near future where I feel 100% again. Um, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it took a week, week or two to recover. Um, and I know that sounds extreme. Um, and everybody's recovery is at different places and everybody's uh, triggers are at different places. But hot damn. <laughs> really took the wind out of my sails. I have so much schoolwork that I should be doing. And I have... So much everything I should be doing. Um, but just like that night, I'm not going to regret doing this. Because honestly, talking to you guys makes me feel better. Makes me feel like I've got my head together. And as cheesy as it sounds, makes me feel like I'm... I don't know if it's making a difference. But at least putting something real out there. Um, cause I think real demonstrations of what it's like to live with trauma don't necessarily exist out there a lot. And I know there's so many people who are still really polarized on the topic of rape or assault or whatever. I've had situations. <laughs> um, and maybe I'll get to a point where that's worth sharing with you guys and stuff too. But um, there's a reason I put a trigger warning at the beginning of this video because for some people, this might be enough to fuck them up for a week or two. Um, and I never want to do that to someone. Um, I'm hoping that this is some sort of helpful. I know that it is to me, if nothing else, and, you know, call me selfish, but I feel like I can breathe better than when I started filming. Um... I hated me too <laughs> because it felt like such a manufactured here ditto <laughs> um, and I never want to feel like someone else has to have themselves um, so someone who relates um, Here are my thoughts. Here are my prayers. I don't prayer soup <laughs> a lot, as you can tell by my vernacular. Um, but uh, once in a blue moon, I have a certain list of people out there in the world that I pray for. And <sighs> survivors and thrivers and people who might still be in the victim category. You guys are all on it. Um, because you're strong ass people. And I don't want people to think that I, I know I talked a lot about the women in this situation. Um, but, you know, I 
I don't want any males or non-binary to think that this excludes you from feeling this way or from being able to be sympathized with in this kind of way. It does not at all. Uh, honestly, it's harder for you guys. It's females, especially cis white females, are getting to pave the way um, when it comes to dealing with trauma from sexual abuse of any kind or assault. Um, so I know that I'm lucky in that aspect. And if anyone ever feels like shooting me a direct message uh, on my Instagram or my Twitter, go for it. I would not know how to deal with it here. Um, I know this has been a long slog of a video. I it uh, so I can get all those mm, uh, mm, uh, out of there, but um, no time for that now. I need to get this out. I love you guys. I really hope that if anyone else is going through the same stuff, you don't feel alone. I am lucky enough to have a lot of people in my life who are super supportive and know and are amazing about it. Um, but if you don't, I guess just don't feel alone. I've been specifically getting care for this since probably like six years specifically for assault etc uh and that doesn't even count like times i tried to go to the rtmp times i uh <sighs> tried to go to the police in different places like just medical help for it. um and this is still where i'm at something simple can still fit um, yeah, I love you guys. I know I'm repeating myself. You're not alone. Not alone. So, 